Tenants in California tried to stop the sale of a landlord's mobile home park so that they could have no rent increases. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of California again, okay? Now, this time it's a little bit different because it's actually going over the landlord's sale of their mobile home park, right? And the tenants, they tried to stop it because they didn't like the people who were buying it. They thought that, oh, well, these people, you know, they're gonna raise our rents. Well, yes, yes they are. No matter who purchases the property, it's very likely that your rents are going to increase. Because as I've mentioned many times before, when a property is purchased, the purchaser is buying it at today's price, okay? Whereas your landlord bought the property at some time in the past for a much lower cost, okay? So if your landlord purchased the property 20 or 30 years ago and paid a half or a quarter of what the current price is, guess what? The landlord, when they pay their loan, they are paying a much, much higher amount. Heck, your, your former landlord might not have even had a loan. They might have actually paid the property off. So when a new landlord comes in, they are going to most likely raise the rents, no matter if it's a mobile home park, apartments, a single family house, whatever, okay? And especially in a situation like this one in this article where they're talking about the landlord is coming in and they have to fix a ton of stuff, you know, bring the, the park up to code because there were a ton of violations and, you know, they, they it the place was in horrible disrepair. So that means that the landlord not only is purchasing the property at a higher basis, right, but they also have to come in and spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, fixing the place up and making it nicer for all of the residents, making it safe, making it so that there aren't any code violations, okay? <laughs> so. So does it make sense at all that you expect that landlord to come in here and spend all this money and don't want a rent increase? No, it doesn't make any sense. So my second issue with this is that the tenants are saying, well, you know, we, we, the tenants, we don't own the property, but we want to dictate who can and who cannot buy the property. Well, it's not up to you. Okay. It should never be up to you. And it should be a private contract between you know the, the current property owner and the buyer, the purchaser, whoever that may be. Okay, they're the ones with the money. They're the ones who you know decided to pay the landlord what they wanted. You know, and this private contract between the two has nothing to do with you tenants. Now, would it be unfortunate if because they fixed the place up, you couldn't afford the rent anymore? Yeah, that would be unfortunate, but that is the way things work. And keeping a place dilapidated and in horrible condition just so that you can afford the rent is dumb. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. What do you think of when a new person comes in, they buy a property, they fix this property up, right? And then they have to raise the rents. Do you think that's fair? Huh? I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I think about, you know, like one of the single family houses that I had before. OK, the place was in horrible condition. You know, it stank of cigarette smoke. Everything in it hadn't been updated since the 80s. OK, I came in, I purchased the property. I spent thirty thousand dollars putting a new roof on it, uh, putting all new siding on it, getting all the plumbing issues fixed, painting every room in the house. And guess what? Now the rent inside that house is going to be higher than it would have been before when it was with the old 80s fixtures and, you know, looking like garbage and smelling and stinking, etc. So yes, it makes sense that landlords will have to raise the rent. But you know, I, I'm just curious if there's any tenants on here who think that that's not fair. Well, if you do, well, you're living in clown world because it doesn't make any sense, <laughs> okay? So this article's coming from PBS NewsHour and it says, in California, tenants of a mobile home park try but fail to stop a corporate takeover. 
Yeah, and they, they play this off like this is some humongous corporation. No, this is a, you know, a, a nice medium-sized mobile home park provider, but they're not like, you know, BlackRock with, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. No, we're, we're talking about, you know, a nice, decent-sized mobile home park provider, okay? So let's get into this article and see what it says. Fresno, California. A judge has authorized the sale of a local mobile home park at the center of an affordable housing battle to a national corporate landlord, dealing a blow to residents, lawyers, and housing advocates who had hoped their bid for a cooperative in which tenants each own a piece of the property could become a model for a city short on housing solutions. For months, residents of the Trails Inn mobile home park feared a purchase from Harmony Communities, a Stockton-based mobile home operating company with 33 properties, primarily in the west. Trails Inn marks its third property in the Fresno area. It has slowly grown into one of the larger mobile home owning operators in the country, at times acquiring parks, renovating them, and raising rents in the process. Yeah, so they own 33 properties. Like I said, yeah, that, that's a decent size, but that's not humongous either, okay? We're not talking about somebody who owns, you know, uh, 100,000 units here, okay? Yeah, they, they own in multiple states, but this is even a California-based business, and they're just buying another mobile home park, and not a very large one that's located in Fresno, California. So, you know, I, I don't see this as a bad thing. They, like they said, they go in, they renovate the, the properties, and then they bring the rents up. And that's, that's pretty much what all landlords are doing when they're purchasing real estate. Okay, we purchase properties, we renovate them, and then we increase the rents. That is a business model that has been followed time and time again. Now, in the case of mobile home parks, you know, it... it it gets a little bit more tricky because the renters or the people who are renting the land actually own their their uh, own houses okay so that means that you're not in charge of the maintenance on the houses but you do want to keep the land up you do want to make sure that you know the the area around it and any community areas are kept in great condition and you know a lot of mobile home parks are owned by small mom and pop landlords who own just like that one park and a lot of them are older so they're getting out of the business right now and what's happening is a lot of it is going over to these operators that own multiple parks etc because they saw hey there is decent cash flow here and there is opportunity to you know for a good investment so i i'm in support of mobile home park operators and i've actually thought about purchasing a mobile home park myself i haven't done it yet but i'm, I'm still interested in it i've gone to seminars about it and the model is very interesting okay and so I, I I just have a problem with when they they try to break up the legal sale and the legal contract that the owners and the purchasers had because they don't feel like the the purchasers are good but let me keep going in this article because I'll go off on a tangent here more than 20 million people live in this type of housing across the U.S., largely due to its affordability and as interest from investors has grown, particularly during the pandemic, mobile home park residents and advocates have grown concerned that they may be at the mercy of decisions from new owners who could push them out with strict rules, higher rents, or evictions. Renters at Trails End are protected by a rent control measure specifically intended for mobile home park residents, which states that a rent increase cannot exceed 75% of the previous year's consumer price index, but this has not been used in years, according to advocates. So yeah, it looks like mobile home parks are already under rent control in, in this place. So you know, the operator still though probably sees that there are ways to increase the rents, especially if they're doing upgrades to the property and bringing it up to code. So, you know, I, I find it odd that there, there are so many complaints about this specific operator. I mean, who, who do they want to be able to purchase the property? I mean, I know it said earlier that they were trying to get a cooperative together, etc. Well, creating a cooperative is no short process. And it might be that these owners, right, 
already with their contract already in place they don't want to break that contract and face penalties etc possibly getting sued so that they can switch it over to a cooperative that might fall apart you know i mean cooperatives still have to get financing for the purchase and where's this money coming from nobody you know, nobody's mentioned any of that. This is a ridiculous situation. You know, you're, you're throwing something out at the last minute, trying to get the government involved because you know what this really falls down to? This is socialism stuff, okay? This is stuff where, well, you know, we believe we have more rights to your property than you do. We believe the government should step in and only allow you to sell to who we say you can sell it to for the amount we tell you to, you know, it's all socialism. You know, it should be pretty obvious. And what, what's the, the reason behind it? So that we can keep our rents low forever and not ever have to pay a penny more. Well, that's not reality. This is a capitalist country. It will always be a capitalist country. And I will always fight against this kind of garbage, okay? I'm not a fan of the rent control that they have over the property, but at least these landlords, they knew about these policies before they jumped into it and they agreed to those terms, okay? But uh, let me skip down a little bit in uh, this article. Let's see here. When asked about residents' concerns, Adams said, no two, pro no two communities and no two states are the same. Adams said the company is interested in talking with Trails In residents as part of the transition. In the case of Trails In, the company offered $1.7 million to purchase the property from an elderly couple who no longer felt they could run the park following a number of housing violations which have caused unsafe living conditions for those who live there. So this company, you know, they decided to purchase this park, you know, they're going to pay $1.7 million for it from an elderly couple who couldn't maintain it anymore. So the place, like they said, had violations due to unsafe living conditions. So what, what do these residents do? The, the, the problem is, right, the residents, the tenants of this park, right, they want the park to stay in its current condition, or the, they don't want it to stay in its current condition. They want it brought up to the, the new standard, right? They want it so that it's nice and perfect and clean, and they want the new landlords to come in and do all of that, spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, fixing it up, and then not charge one penny more for the rent. You know, they should just take the loss. They, they should just keep the rents the exact same as they are. Even though they spent, you know, way more money fixing this park up and making it safe for you, by the way. You know, they, they fixed it up for you, the tenants, and they shouldn't take a profit. That is dumb, okay? <laughs> this is reality, okay? When a, a new property owner, when a new landlord comes in and they purchase a property and they fix it up, they are spending a lot of money and they expect a return on that investment. And that return is going to be seen by increasing the rents. In fact, if they don't increase the rents, they probably wouldn't even be able to get the loan to purchase the property in the first place. Because when you go down to a commercial lender, you have to explain to them that, hey, I'm going to do A, B, and C in order to even get the loan, okay? Because the previous rents they will not approve the loan based on those previous rents. But it's obvious these tenants, they don't know anything about getting a commercial mortgage. So I don't, I don't know why I even waste my time trying to explain it. But, you know, I'm glad that the um, judge went ahead, approved this sale, and these landlords are able to purchase this property. And as for the tenants, they need to just understand the fact that when someone fixes your property up and makes it safe, fixes the violations, makes it nicer, then the rents are going to increase.